Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Get your calendars out, Springbok fans, because we do have a date for the first post-Rugby World Cup 2023 Springbok squad. And uh, interesting to see exactly what the squad looks like, given the date of it and the players that might, or more importantly, might not be available for the Springboks um, for that first clash against Wales, which will take place on the 22nd of June at Twickenham Stadium. Um, now, before we get into exactly what the data is, what the plans are, what Rusty Rasmus had to say on the back of the second Springbok alignment camp, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so we have got an official update from the Springbok camp uh, where 38 players attended a two-day camp on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, with the Springbok coaching staff. Apparently, the players participated in a series of gym and off-field strategy sessions presented by the coaching staff to familiar themselves with the structures the team placed to implement for the season. Basically, the gym sessions would just be about keeping up their fitness as their usual sort of um, routine would have been, but the fact that they're still in season and then off-field strategy sessions to have um, these players um, there and be able to chat about exactly what the plans are. Uh, so speaking on the uh, the camp, uh, Rusty Osmer said, this camp was extremely uh, valuable in exposing the players to detailed aspects of the game, which we would like to implement this season. At the first two alignment camps, we adopted a broader view of what the coaching staff will look at when it comes to a team selection and to introduce the players to the coaches and their ideas, and especially the new members of the coaching team in Tony Brown and Jerry Flannery and National Laws Advisor. Yeah, paper. Uh, with our first test less than a month away, it was vital that we started introducing the players to our new systems so that they have sufficient time to familiarize, familiarize themselves with the structures as we plan to select the group of players for the Wales test and the Castle Lager incoming series. Those two tests against Ireland as well as Portugal. He said, as a coaching team, this camp allowed us to get a better understanding of the players and their skills to give them enough detail to work on uh, in the next few weeks before we gather for the first official training camp, which will be hosted in June. Uh, players on the Sharks were excused uh, from the alignment camp. Um, so as mentioned, the first test on the 22nd of June, the Springbok squad will gather for the first time on the 9th of June, Sunday the 9th of June, which is the day after the URC quarterfinals. The test squad for the Wales match was set to be announced after the conclusion of the URC uh, quarterfinals on Saturday the 8th of June, which means that obviously we won't know, you know, even then, you know, up until the end of that match, which players will be available. So that's an interesting deadline. And I suppose it has to be the deadline because it means that any players who, any teams that get into the semifinals will not be considered for that Wales test. So Bulls win their quarterfinal, they will not, their players will not be considered for the Wales test. Uh, the Lions get a quarterfinal and win it. They will not be considered uh, for the Wales test. Similarly with the Stormers. And it's, uh, a bit of an interesting situation. So as a Springbok coaching staff, you want to be able to select the best players. But at the same time, you also want to see your local teams doing the best they can and going as far as they can. So it's a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't uh, situation. Which means that basically they're going to have to select potentially either two or even three different squads. Uh, one with our Bulls, or actually more than that really. Uh, you know, a, a squad without Bulls players. A squad without Stormers players. If the Lions get there, a squad without Lions players. Then they've got to plan for potentially a squad without Bulls and Stormers players. Then they've got to worry about a squad without maybe a without Stormers and Lions players, or without Lions and Bulls players. Um, then they've got to plan for a squad without all three of them, as well as a potential squad with all three of them. So I mean, I'm trying to work out how many squads I've just named. It's about eight or nine squads. You're gonna to have to sit there with different lists to sit there and say, right, okay. If the Bulls go through and the other teams don't, who's our squad? Okay, if the Lions go through and the other two don't, who's our squad? So it's going to be a very interesting uh, squad uh, with regards to how much preparation they're going to have to be put in because they're going to have to basically be sitting there. Uh, the fact that they reckon it's going to be named soon after the conclusion of the quarterfinals means that they reckon they will have squads ready to go. It'll just depend on what the ramifications of those quarterfinals are. So we wait and see. Um, it should be very interesting. Who are your bolters? Who are your, your players you think might sneak into a squad? And, uh, you know, for example, if there was no Bulls, uh, you know, squad, who's going to play 15? And there's no really room. It's going to currently Lawrence. Uh, you've got Chesham Colby potentially available, as well as like Kuhn Hall, maybe. So, you know, who would your options be? Let me know down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.